I have come here to Baidu headquarters. I'm located in the northwest section of Beijing on a very, very cold winter day. Chao Du is a little robot here talking to me. Now this is um, not an, a building that's open to the public. They were gracious enough to open the doors for me to see what Baidu is all about. Come with me and check it out. This right here is an interactive timeline. Baidu uh, founded officially in the year 2000, uh, January 2000, by this gentleman here, Robin Lee, who's the current CEO. Fun fact, they founded it um, <laughs> in a little hotel room not far from here near Peking University. And since then it has grown into what everyone knows Baidu is today. So very impressive. This is interactive. If you click on a blue bond, it opens up and reveals what it is. That's really cool. It's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. So Baidu watch. continues to grow. In 2005, they were listed on NASDAQ. And then in 2021, they got listed in Hong Kong. Okay, so after a quick short video, now they're going to open the doors and let us into this place. So this is the search uh, data, you know, real time, the top trending uh, searches, search habits. So this next one, this is all the real time uh, map searches throughout China. Look at that. And see this number here, 66 billion, 300 million. This is just today, since midnight today. That's how many map searches they've had. It is right now 10.30 in the morning. And already we've got 66 billion. You can imagine as the day goes on just how crazy this will get. This is the real time traffic congestion in China. 10.30 in the morning on a Friday, uh, January 7th. You can see number one most congested city in the, in the country is Chongqing, followed by Hangzhou and Guangzhou. It's for all my friends in Chongqing, I think you're stuck in traffic. Xiaodu, Xiaodu. This type of uh, technology we've seen before. Oh, there's the TV goes on. Shanghai Disneyland. Been there. But you just say shall do, shall do, and then give a command, and the whole house is uh, connected to it. Uh, we've seen that in smart hotel rooms. So all of these are Baidu products. These are you have ones for kids too, huh? Shall do for kids. So this is out near the Olympic Village. You can see, I think it's a Hongqi. And uh, on the left, this is the map that the car is using to identify all the obstacles around it. And then over here, this is the one that the passengers will actually see in the car. Okay, this is an experience. So I'm gonna get to ride in a couple of the robo taxis from Baidu. This is a Lincoln, and this Lincoln is their third generation one. And this over here is a Hongqi, and this is their fourth generation one. And the fifth generation one is actually out at the Olympic Village. And they were telling me, okay, so up here, this is, a, this is the LiDAR sensor, and there's nine cameras surrounding it to give it a 360 degree view. And in the back, there is the computer that maps it all together down to the millimeter. Super, super cool. Now there's a driver in each one of these cars, but the new ones out on Olympic Village, the fifth generation, are driverless. It's like something out of a movie. <laughs> it's just huge. You can see just from one generation going from this generation to this generation, how the technology has gotten more advanced and it's shrunk. It'll not gonna be, it's not gonna be very much time until these are going to be integrated into the cars themselves. Ni hao. Ni hao. So the driver's going to be here just, and you're going to see his hands will not be touching the steering wheel as we, uh, as we begin. The okay, so they require me to wear a seatbelt here and we're off and running. Wow, it took off pretty fast actually. Turn signals, automatic. Making a right hand turn. Right. Nice.
nice and slow through this parking lot over the speed bumps, so it can recognize speed bumps. All right now, we're just going through for a ride around the block here in the um, in the Baidu uh, Center, but it gives you an idea of what this technology is capable of. I love these screens in front of me. They're very clear, and it just gives you an added sense of of uh, safety. I mean, knowing that the computer can see everything. Look, in front of us is a person. Recognizes the person. And steers clear of it. That was an audible warning on the outside of the car, warning the passengers around that there's a car coming. That was a nice little touch. Pretty smooth. Now, I've ridden in um, autonomous vehicles in the past. A lot of people think, oh, it's, there's, it's scary. You don't want to trust the computers. But I got to say, I feel very safe in this. In many ways, a lot safer than other cabbies that I have ridden with in the past. If you've been to New York City, you know what I'm talking about. Ah, uh, shishia. Uh, uh. All right. You know, it being a Hong Chi, it's very comfortable and very spacious in there. This is my first time riding on the Apollo. Um, they call the Apollon. And you can see here, these are the cameras, the and then the LiDAR is down here. The thing that gets me about these Apollos is just how tall they are. They're very short. They're just a short little um, range buses and they're everywhere, but they're just these big pods. And I've noticed that you can customize these for anything. You can customize them for public transportation, for health, for food delivery, for regular delivery, anything. Ni hao. Yeah. All right, so obviously, thank you very much. We have seat belts for safety and comfort. <laughs> All right. There's an operator and he's here um, just operating it and for safety purposes. And then the bus has no driver. It's completely driverless. We've done this before, and this has been out being tested throughout China, um, most notably near my home in Guangdong. Uh, mostly technology parks, uh, local municipal parks, um, closed areas, not out on the city streets quite yet. Um, but the next generation, I'm told, will start in the city streets. Oh, that's where it's all headed to. I mean, I know that cities want to see this out on the city streets as soon as possible. And I know the people want to see it too. The people that I've talked to about this are really, really excited. And it's a big box on wheels. I mean, it's just made for moving the maximum amount of stuff and people in the most efficient way possible. So it's, a, it's using the same technology as the robo taxi. It's all located here in the bus. Yes. So all the information is collected and stored and computed and then operated from the bus itself. It does not go to any kind of control center. It's all from here, all automated. Is that an Xbox controller? <laughs> okay, why not? So you don't have a a, a, a steering wheel yeah, that goes yeah, in to steer it. it. So it's st steered by a Xbox controller. <laughs> if uh, if the computer fails, you control it like a video game. Yeah. Because we are in the future. Right? Like I can say, it's, it's pretty comfortable. 60 kilometers per hour that this thing can go top speed. So this is 120 kilometer range on a single charge. And this is the older one. This is yeah. not the new one. I love that idea that it can be a smart screen. So it can be transparent like this or you can flip a button and make it you know interactive yeah, it so it's control. voice controlled and the newer ones we are arrived safely thank you for not crashing sir appreciate it and that's the apollo this is the next generation of robo taxi and this is a car that has no driver in it and he is seeing a live feed of where the car is and he's not driving it but he is here uh, for a safety precaution and they also tell me if the car gets into a situation because it follows the rules any kind of sticky situation he's able to take control from there this is the next generation before we go to fully autonomous no driver everything is completely 100 percent automated by a computer with no safety checks this is where we're at right now in the technology of course, everyone talks about robo-taxis, but this technology can apply to industrial, to delivery, to um, construction vehicles in remote areas of the country. So this is the Baidu patent wall. Look at all the patents they have. Oh my god. <laughs> that is so impressive. 
Do Coffee. We have a coffee shop right here in the lobby. First of all, I want to say that security is really tight, but they're extremely uh, professional. I really appreciate everything that they've done. Of course, I'm more interested to see about what life is like here on the Paidu campus. It's one thing to look at all the technology and all the groovy stuff that they're doing. You can read about that and you can see that online. But for the everyday worker, what it's like to come to this campus. And if you're curious, yes, the coffee is heavily discounted. So they call this the old building, but you know what? The architecture is actually very modern. There's an ongoing theme of the search box, of course, Baidu being an online search engine. Uh, so you're going to see that theme everywhere in the design. One thing I have noticed is that the the employees here, they're very young, and it's a very hip place and very active place, and also very casual. I love to see that. When I first thought about Beijing companies, I thought suit and tie, but no, it's, it's very, very casual and comfortable for everybody. And the gym is full. It's lunchtime right now, and there's a ton of people in here working out. There's more people in this gym than in my gym back home. It's pretty well equipped too. They got some nice uh, equipment in here. It's packed with people. Hey, how's it going, man? How you doing? You know, 30, 40,000 people total in all of Baidu. It is lunchtime. We're gonna go try to find some lunch. I don't think we're gonna do a KFC. <laughs> really good. They have so many different choices for food here. It's insane. It's huge. It just goes on and on and on. Oh my god, look at the soup. Look at that. All the tables here have this plastic well, even if you're eating with your friends, you can still talk to them, but you're not going to be putting your spittle all over there. But it's definitely a reflection of the times we live in. It looks fantastic. It smells really good. Alright. A Baidu gift shop. <laughs> okay. Let's go check this out. How many of these do you see? <laughs> and the desks of people, right? So the mascot for Baidu is the bear. That's the bear paw. And that's so they call it the bear factory. This gift shop is only available to the employees of Baidu. So if you can get past the front door and security, you can come here. But uh, it's best to know someone who works for Baidu to get some of this stuff. Xiaodu, <laughs> Xiaodu. So now it's going to position me to take a photo. And now I just scan this QR code and I can get my photo.